Hello again, Marvin Kilborn here, retired public school teacher. This video is going to be about public school administrators, and by administrators I'm mainly talking about principals and superintendents. Um, there's an old joke that you can walk into an assembly of public school administrators and yell the word coach, and about 80% of them are going to turn and look at you and say, yeah. Well, it's funny, but it's also true, and it points out one of the main reasons why public school administrators are so horrible. They come out, typically, they come out of the lowest ranks of education. They come out of your elementary. Most of, too many, too many of these people are former elementary school teachers, kindergarten teachers, PE teachers, and I'm actually PE teacher. I hate to say that word because PE teacher is really an oxymoron. Nobody teaches PE. You know, there's nothing about passing out soccer balls or footballs or baseball equipment that makes anybody an actual classroom teacher. But far, far too many of our administrators were former coaches or, again, elective teachers, uh, elementary school teachers. Very few of our administrators come out of the high school ranks or, or at least the core subjects of math, social studies, science, and English. Actually, I believe that if more of our principals, more of our administrators were former math or science teachers, we'd probably have a whole lot smarter administrators and we'd have a lot better run schools. I've mentioned before that I was in the military for 22 years and it, it took becoming a public school teacher to realize that the leadership I had in the military was world class compared to the idiots running our public schools. These people are just not very impressive at all. They're not very smart. They're not very experienced, most of them. I'm not saying they're not decent people. I worked for some principals who at heart seemed seemed like they were decent enough people, but they just were so ill-equipped to, to be leading. Uh, a lot of them are very pompous, very uh, arrogant, because I guess once they get that principal title attached to their name, they automatically think they know everything. I worked for a, a middle school principal in Fort Worth once, and I taught eighth grade math and uh, eighth grade math and algebra one to eighth graders. The principal had been a former kindergarten teacher. That was her entire teaching background, kindergarten. And she called me into her office once and said, Mr. Kilborn, you're, you just don't know how to teach eighth grade math. And I'm like, what the heck is it that qualifies this woman to tell me whether or not I know how to teach eighth grade math? I mean, uh, there's not really a comparison between teaching children how to not color outside the lines and teaching a kid how to solve a quadratic equation. Just no real comparison there. But that's how these, these people are. They, they walk around the school thinking they're something special just because they're principals and or superintendents. Uh, they're not very supportive of teachers. As a matter of fact, if you look at all the reasons teachers quit the profession, why teachers leave, every single one of these reasons can be traced back to bad leadership. Unlike the military, uh, School administrators don't receive any kind of leadership or management training. The standards are very, very low to become a public school administrator, and this is part of the reason why they're so bad. Another reason they're so bad is uh, the motivation, their, their motivation for becoming an administrator to begin with. I want to go back to uh, <laughs> one of the things principals do is they, they'll come into the teacher's classroom and presume to evaluate, uh, critique a teacher's performance in the classroom. Well, when so many of our administrators are either former elementary school teachers, PE teachers, elective teachers, things like that, it makes them, it makes it very difficult and it really doesn't equip them to walk into a math or science or social studies or even an English classroom and tell the teacher how to teach, but they presume to do so. And they usually just give really stupid feedback. Uh, they'll come into your room, maybe 10, 15 minutes, sit there, and then write you up. And they'll say things like, you need to make sure you're asking more direct questions to ensure learning. Or you need to put more space between your desks. Or you need to make sure to write your objective on the board. I mean, none of these things are even important, or at least not that important when it comes to teaching kids. But that's about the only thing they have to contribute is just Stupid, stupid advice. One of the problems, one of the reasons our, teach, our principals, our administrators are so bad is uh, the motivation, the reason they become principals in the first place. 
It's mainly two, two main reasons why these people become administrators. One, they either weren't very good teachers or didn't like teaching, so they become administrators. Or another main reason is for the money. There's no doubt administrators make way, way, way more money than your classroom teacher does. I actually worked for a principal once who was uh, a decent guy, just a neat guy, a very likable guy, young. He had only spent five years in the classroom before becoming a principal. And he admitted to me one day, he said, Mr. Kilborn, I said, man, I spent five years in the classroom. They like to eat my lunch. I, I couldn't handle it. And decided it, he decided if he was going to stay in the profession, he needed to go into a different direction. So he took the principal certification test, passed it, and became an assistant principal, and then later became my principal. Uh, he also admitted he did it for the money. Well, I'm sorry. If, if, you're, if, if you're wanting to be a leader, and your only motivations are you don't like your job, you don't like being a teacher, and you also just want to do it for the money. Neither one of these things are going to lead to you becoming a good leader. It, it, it just doesn't work that way. You have to be driven. You have to be motivated to lead people. And you have to have a strong desire to make things better and to take care of your people. Most school administrators know nothing about this. Uh, they're called administrators mainly because they're not leaders. They're mainly just paper pushers and checklist followers. They just go through the motions. They show up, put in their time, and, and go home. Uh, they're, they're just not very supportive, and they probably wouldn't know how to support you even if they wanted to because they don't have the background, again, as actual classroom teachers. They come out of the lowest ranks of public education. Another reason why public administrators are so bad is the standards are way too low. Uh, I knew a guy, um, well, I'll say that in, in education, there are all these certification tests you have to take. Like, I'm a social studies and math teacher. So first I had to take my teacher certification test. Then I had to take, to become social studies, had to take and pass my social studies test. And then later, when I realized I couldn't, find a job as a social study, studies teacher, I became a math teacher. And all I did was I had to take and pass the math certification test. So there's certification tests for every type of position within public education. The funny thing is, principal and superintendent certification tests are the easiest of all the tests, and they have the lowest failure rates. As an example, I knew a guy, he was a middle school social studies teacher took him four tries, four tries, to take and pass the middle school social studies test to finally be able to teach social studies. Then later he decided to become a principal, or at least maybe he wanted to become a principal. So he, took, he signed up and took the principal certification test, passed it on the very first try without even studying. So it's, it's just the standards are just way too low. Also, you only have to be a teacher or at least have a teaching certificate of any kind, again, it can be anything, choir, PE, math, science, kindergarten, it could be any certification. And then you can spend two years in a teaching certification position, only two years, take the certification test to become an administrator. And you can actually become an, an assistant principal or a principal with only two years of teaching experience. That's insane. I mean, that, that, that's re ridiculous. He's you just don't have enough experience in the classroom to, to know how to lead an entire school, but that's how the system is set up. I actually interviewed with a uh, middle school principal in Houston one time. It was a middle school in Houston, and the guy who was the end of the principal he seemed very young, and I asked him, how old are you? He goes, 27. This was a 27-year-old kid leading an entire school. I, I just... Seems insane to me. Of course, I'm old, 62 years old. Um, I know it, with age, wisdom tends to come with age. But another thing that comes with age is a very, very low tolerance for stupidity and ignorance. I, I can guarantee you that's true. And that's probably guides some of my uh, thinking when it comes to public education and just what a, a rotten profession it is and how messed up it is. I mean, I actually worked in, uh, I know of a superintendent in a district who had been a second grade PE teacher. 
And again, PE teacher, that sounds stupid. PE teacher is an oxymoron. There's no such thing as teaching PE. But, but he was a second grade PE teacher for a few years. Now he's the superintendent of an entire school. There was another superintendent not too far from where I live. He uh, was a former choir director a school choir director. That's his entire teaching background. But now he's the superintendent of the entire of the entire system. It's ridiculous. Like I say the, the people that make up the ranks of administration, they are the least intelligent, the least academic, the least qualified, the least impressive. They, they really are just kind of the dummies of public education. And another way to prove that is I mentioned in another video, and I'll bring it up again here, in order to go to college, you typically take an SAT or an ACT test, and they've, they've done studies on this, where they'll look at all the different academic disciplines in college and look at ACT and SAT scores for these different disciplines. And we know that people with the lowest ACT and SAT scores are the ones that are dr drawn to the world of public education. You just don't have to be very smart to do this job, or at least Unless you're a math or science teacher, these are definitely uh, the more intellectual academic people, the math and science teachers. Other subjects just don't, it doesn't require a heck of a lot of brain power. I mean, come on, think about teaching PE. How much, how much brain power does it take to be a coach, for God's sakes? But of the ACT and SAT thing, the scores, even though teachers have the lowest, on average, ACT, SAT scores, your public, public school administrators have even lower scores than that. School administrators are truly the dummies of public education. And again, 15 years in the profession, eight different school districts, work for or with a whole bunch of different administrators, principals, superintendents. I can attest to these people are just not not very bright. I would go so far as to say they're pretty stupid, except for the one that I worked with in uh, my first couple years at Tatum High School. He was just really, really good. His name was Alan. <laughs> one out of all the other ones, that's that's not good odds. Not very good at all. Well, anyway, that's my rant on, on public school administrators. Uh, my next video, I don't normally do this, but my next video is going to be some of my recommendations, my suggestions on how we can improve public education, especially in, in the realm of teaching, administration, and school boards. It's really no more than raising standards. The reason our schools are so horrible is because the standards for entry are so very, very low, we end up with just not very impressive people running our schools. So if you've been watching my videos, enjoying them, as always, I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like. Leave a comment. Uh, I'm not getting enough comments. I, I really want to know what people think of my videos. But until next time, bye-bye.